Hello and welcome back to my channel. I have another course breakdown for you guys. Is, um, this is another second year course normally done first semester, I think. Um, it's not a massive prerequisite for other courses, but it is one that they kind of want you to have as soon as possible, and that is Introduction to Microprocessors. Um, I've also heard before I took this course that this is um, at Laurier, at least, which is the university I go to. I heard from people that this was one of their least favorite courses, um, and one of the more difficult ones, but I think that it may have been a professor that they had before, um, who luckily doesn't teach it anymore, starting, I think, when I took it, which is fantastic. <laughs> I really didn't mind it at all. I, didn't, um, I thought the concepts were important and pretty easy to grasp as long as you did study. This was, I mean, not to sound like a bad student, but if there's a course that I know for sure I don't have to study hard for, I probably won't study hard for. This is one of the courses that I knew I would not do well if I didn't stay on top of things. So now we'll move on to the outline for the course. It was all focused around a current um, commercial microprocessor. I don't, I'm not actually sure just how current, um, but we, most of our studies were focused around the ARM processor. Advanced uh, Risk Machine, IRSC Machine. <laughs> I'm tired, it's exams. So most of our studies were around the ARM architecture. It may vary depending on what school you're in. So we learned about the architecture of the ARM microprocessor as well as um, how to write in its assembly language. If you've never heard of it, assembly language is like very, very low level code. Um, it's kind of hard to read, though Though very simple, it's not the easiest, it's not very human readable, I guess. Once again, I don't want to say it's more complicated because I don't really think it is. So we learned the assembly language for that. So we learned about the relationship between the architecture, assembly language, and system operation on a very low level, as well as the relationship between assembly language, um, higher level languages, and the operating system as a whole. So this one I thought was very cool as well because it's very in depth on how a computer actually processes the information that it's given and it got us kind of looking at what's really going on inside the computer after you know we've programmed something in C and then it gets translated so that the computer can actually read it. So it was really cool to kind of see um, just to kind of lift yet another layer off of what really goes on inside. The textbook that we use is called Computer Organization and Architecture. I remember finding the textbook extremely helpful especially when the professor was confusing which he 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 was. He definitely was a lot of the time. So yeah, I found the textbook very helpful for that course, especially because a lot of the concepts are things that you probably have not heard of before and are much more in depth than you're probably used to by second year. So it was really nice to have kind of a textbook helper so that I could reread things over and over again, memorize them, understand them better, and it also offers more resources just outside of the classroom. Um, we also had a lab for that. Um, it was mainly learning how to program in assembly language, so that lower level language that I was speaking about. So if you guys have some more in-depth questions about this course, let me know down below in the comments and I will get back to them as soon as possible. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to smile and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.